I've been called a lot of things in my time. Some good, some bad. That is probably true for you as well. Your parents look at you and call you their child. If you have kids, they look at you and call you their parent. A corporation might look at you and call you a consumer. Friends will call you friends. Enemies will call you enemies. Maybe at one point in your life, someone looked at you and called you the love of their life. And then at another point, someone called you their ex. Maybe somebody traveling behind you, tailgating you on the highway, waiting for you to move out of the fast lane, that person calls you things that I can't say in church. (laughs) You've been called a lot of things in your time. Some good, some bad, some helpful, some less than helpful. Some uh, are, are words that define you as a person. Some really don't have anything to do with you and, and you can ignore them. Well, does it matter what God says about you? Does it matter what Jesus calls you? I would say absolutely it does. It does matter what God calls you because he's the one that has the right to define you. He's the one who can say who you are. And that's what we're thinking about this morning as we turn to the Sermon on the Mount, a section in which Jesus says a couple of things about you. He says that you are salt and that you are light. We're going to talk about those things this morning, uh, starting with that first one, when he says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Jesus is calling you salt. What does that mean? Well, you've got to think a little bit about what salt is used for. Salt, of course, makes things taste good. Eggs and, and steak and things like that just simply taste better when they're seasoned with some salt. That's always been true. But what was true in Jesus' day, more than it is now, was that in a time before refrigeration, salt was important to use when preserving food or keeping your food from going bad. If you you think about it, at that time, if you were to catch some fish that you were going to eat later, maybe uh, the best thing for you to do was to put it at the bottom of a a barrel and cover it in salt. That way, uh, the the bacteria kind of stays out of it for at least a little longer than it would otherwise. Or if you've roasted up a, a lamb and you're going to eat some a little later, you just salt it real good and then that helps preserve it. It keeps it from decaying uh, or from going bad or rotting. That was the, the use of salt. And so in that sense, if Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth, then he's saying that you as my disciples are going to be a preservative factor in this world. That in a a culture or in a, a world that is rotting or going bad, Christians are put there to preserve things, to kind of stave off the decay to keep it from corruption. It says, you are the, the light of, or you are the salt of the earth, so be salt. If you ever see uh, those chefs on TV, they always salt uh, their food from, from high up. They don't, you don't see them have the salt shaker real down close to the plate, but it's usually a little higher. In fact, you have the one guy, you know, what's his name, that has, bounces it off his elbow, <laughs> you know. The, the, so why do they do that? It's so that the, the salt spreads out. So it isn't just in one little clump on the plate, but rather the whole dish gets seasoned. Well, in the same way, God, from way up high in heaven, he has seasoned the earth with Christians. 